Experts at Magic Manor have everything you'll need this year, including actual character masks from famous motion pictures. And they can show you the proper application of makeup to impress that special someone. Magic Manor's professional hand-painted custom masks start as low as $2.50. This Halloween, remember Magic Manor. Wigs, masks, makeup, costumes, shockingly authentic. Magic Manor, East Wind Mall. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to today's video. Today I have a few packages that I want to unbox for you guys, but it's not typical stuff that I usually show off. Uh, I've really been getting into some of the um, mask channels, specifically Horror Hound 85 and Ryan's Monster Unveilings. Uh, every time they show off a mask, one of those vintage masks, it really brings me back to my childhood, uh, especially when I see those old... Um, Don Post, a distortion mask. Uh, you know, Halloween was a big holiday for me growing up, and um, those monsters were just a big part of my childhood. So I thought I'd pick up one of the more classic uh, mask designs. I'm not a mask collector, obviously, but I do have some in my collection. Uh, but this would be my really my first steps into that aspect of the hobby. So let's open these up and see what I got. So I've gone ahead and ripped open the tape. Uh, some of you mask collectors probably already know what this is. Let's take her out of the box and get a better look. And here it is, a first generation recast of the 1972 Vern Langdon zombie that appeared on the cover of the 1917, 1972 issue of Creepy. Um, let me close in on all the details. Of course, the original is one of the rarest um, and probably the most valuable latex mask in the hobby. Um, Vern Langdon was a, a former Don Post, uh, Don Post employee. And I think he only did two dozen copies of this mask. Um, the original, I think there's only two known to exist today. And uh, one copy is a restored copy and the other is still in its original condition. Um, it can be found in the collection of the Crimson Ghost, uh, Rudy Muniz. <clears throat> this recast um, was done in the 80s, maybe around 1988 or so. Um, <clears throat> by Dwayne Whitehead, I think. And I think he, he did about 10 copies of this. But I don't know. You know, I'm not a mask historian. or I'm, I'm new to the whole mask scene, so I'm sure you guys um, will correct me. I'm just, I'm just in awe of the, of the mask. It just screams Halloween to me. It screams my childhood. Uh, it screams, you know, you know, Halloween parades at school and stuff like that. Elementary school. I happen to be. I I was born in '72. So this really brings back a lot of um, childhood memories. Now the mask doctor Kelly Mann. He did an original re-sculpt of the Langdon zombie. Um, and I think Vern Langdon art directed that project. Um, they produced about 30 copies of that mask. This, again, is not that mask. This is a, a first generation casting. 
uh, well, a first generation recast of an original um, that they did in back in the late 80s. I'll close in some of the details. <clears throat> The person who sold me this mask, Tyler, he was nice enough to include the stand. I did, um, I did pick up a plastic mannequin head. This head, um, picked it up for fifteen dollars on eBay to display the mask. But there's no way uh, the mask is getting the opening of the mask is getting onto this. So I'll, I'll save this for something else that I pick up in the future. Being new to um, masks, I was told that they shouldn't be displayed on foam heads because foam could dry out the latex. So you guys that are in to this stuff, just be mindful of that. Well, a lot of these guys do have it, have the mask displayed on foam heads, but they wrap the foam with plastic bags. So the, the Langdon zombie appeared, first appeared again on the cover of a 1972 issue of Creepy Magazine, um, which I do have here, picked up on eBay. So let's open this up. So here's the, the 1972 issue of Creepy with the Vern Langdon zombie on the cover. <clears throat> Again, such a such a beautiful, beautifully sculpted um, creature that really, I don't know, to, to me it really brings you back to the the 70s, 80s, all of the rubber masks that you saw you know, like in stores like Woolworths and stuff like that around Halloween time. Now again, the guy who sold me this mask actually has um, one of the original ads that appeared in Famous Monsters, I believe. And he hooked me up with that, which was very cool of him. In terms of value, um, collectability, I don't know what the story are, is with these um, first generation recasts. I know in um, the life size bust um, scene, recasts are a big no no. Um, so I don't know if it's shunned upon that I even own this. I don't know anything. And all about it but I don't plan to resell this is going to be um, a permanent fixture in my collection and by the way the latex on this is still soft I didn't detect I couldn't find any hard areas on the latex and I'm assuming it's latex and not vinyl or rubber So again, these guys, I, you know, Ryan and, and Jordan, I, I caught the bug from both of these guys. Um, I'll put links to the description in my description box uh, to both of their channels for you guys to check out. Um, but I really like these classic monster masks. And I think I'll pick up a few, maybe some of the Dom Post Calendar masks. 
to start off with. But there she is, a first generation recast of the Vern Langdon 1972 zombie, along with an original issue, the cover that it took, uh, the mask was pictured on. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And I will see you in the next. Good luck with the holiday shopping, guys. Um, I have yet to begin. Oh, and before I ended this video, I thought I'd just do a quick couple of seconds with the flash on for you guys to get a better idea of the mask in brighter light. Again, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Be good. See you guys soon.